It's curious to me how different people can remember certain things differently. My partner Mike and I have been married 14 years and we've known each other since we were 13. While we share a lot of the same history, what we remember from middle school and high school and college don't always exactly match up. The stories that shape how we frame our shared past are different and show two different perspectives of the same story. Different people simply, simply remember things differently. And I suppose that's why we have four Gospels, four perspectives of how, how it all went down, a community of voices rather than just one, each telling a part of the story so we can grasp more fully as we read them all. For Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of the other Gospel writers, what was paramount to them on that Thursday night of the Passover was the sharing of bread and the cup, the institution of what we now call the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. But the Gospel of John focuses on another part of that evening. What stood out to this Gospel writer was that Jesus, God incarnate, got down on his knees and washed the feet of his disciples. It's a different perspective, but an important one. On that night, not only did Jesus invite us to partake in his body and in his blood and to be united with him and one another through that act, but he demonstrated what that unity should look like. He showed them the radical nature of the community that he was building, one whose foundation was not built on power or hierarchy, but on service and love. Their teacher, their Lord, showed them, to the shock of Peter and probably several other disciples, that their call was not to rise to power and overthrow Rome, or to ride in on a donkey or a colt and receive hosannas and praise. Rather, their call was to common, everyday menial tasks like foot washing, usually set aside for the work of a servant. And these simple acts of service held the potential to subvert the social order through radical love and humility. I'm struck at how the Gospel of John treats Judas, the one who would later betray Jesus. If Jesus knew one of his disciples would betray him, would he still wash his feet? Would he have still shared with him the bread and the cup, his own body and blood? Would he have still shown the kind of love that he did to even the one who would turn against him? Could Jesus love his enemy? According to the Gospel of John, the answer is yes. Even though he knew, Jesus loved and treated the one who would betray him the same as any one of his disciples. That is radical love. And for this brief moment, on this Thursday of the Passover meal, the disciples, all of them, felt safe, felt loved. They had been washed and they had been fed. But we all know the story, that those first disciples stood on the cusp of denial, despair, and death, and that this is the thir Thursday that Jesus is betrayed, the day before Jesus is killed and denied three times by Peter, that the disciples were about to face some of the hardest, loneliest, and lost days of their lives. But right now, on this night, they sit with loved ones, sharing a meal, able to be fully present, fed not only by the bread and wine, but by the relationships around the table. Have you ever sat at a table like that? On this night, 
Before they face a time of trial, Jesus demonstrates love and servanthood in ways that turn their world upside down by the washing of feet. Life is filled with both joys and with sorrows, and being a disciple of Christ doesn't mean we're exempt from the pain and hurt of this world. Those first disciples certainly weren't, even Jesus wasn't, and neither are we. But before the disciples fall into their most troublesome days, before his death leaves them frightened and lost, Jesus washes their body, gives them bread that is his body, reminds them of how sacred their lives are and how loved we are, all of us. The symbols of our faith, water, the bread and fruit of the vine are symbols that give us glimmers of hope in the midst of despair. Just as those disciples were given these as they turned to face their time of trial, we too are given these to help us along the way and to give us the strength to faithfully continue in a world that is broken and fearful. We too have been washed by the hands of Jesus, and we too are fed by his body. Every time we witness a new baptism in our community of faith, we are called to remember the waters that claim us again and again as God's own. Every time someone reaches out to us in surprisingly intimate and honest ways, our feet are washed. Every time we have a potluck or a coffee with one another in Calvin Hall, we are fed by the body of Christ. And every time we come together around the Lord's table, we receive the nourishment, the bread and wine that unites us again with Jesus and with believers of every time and place who gently urge us to persevere in the pursuit of love, justice, and peace. We are each given a piece of bread, a taste of wine, a drop of water, reminding us that we have feasted with Jesus, reminding us that we are not alone, reminding us that Christ has washed our feet and that we are deeply loved. Hold on to that which gives us life. Hold on so that on this Maundy Thursday, we can have the strength to obey Christ, who commanded us a mandatum novum, a new commandment, saying, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. We gather on Monday Thursday to be united as the body of Christ and with the body of Christ. We gather on Monday Thursday to have our feet washed and to remember our baptism and God's claim on our lives, but we do so not only to experience how much we are loved by God, but to receive the sustenance that gives us the ability to share that love with others, to transform this world that so desperately needs to know and experience that love. It's not easy, but as we go through the Maundy, station, Maundy Thursday stations tonight and remember our baptisms, partake of the body of Christ, and offer our love to the community and to the world, I invite you to fear not and to be fully present here. Hold on to that piece of bread reminding us that we are not alone. Hold on to the shell that claims us and calls us, reminding us of a God who kneels before us and washes our feet. And give away your offerings and words of love so that we might share this love of God with all the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.